Hey, I'm CJ Maurer with The Gist. Welcome back to another one of our strategic HubSpot tutorial videos. Today, we're gonna show you the best way to use HubSpot to track services that you provide to your clients, projects, retainers, or any other coordinated effort of services being provided to make your business money. Let's dive in. I wanna start here in the data model. And this is a new tool that HubSpot really talked a lot about at last year's Inbound 2024. This is a really great tool to show you how all of your objects relate to one another, right? Deals associate with this, so on and so forth. What HubSpot has also done in that process very recently is they've launched new objects, new default objects that you can use in your CRM. So the ones that everyone's are is familiar with are contacts, companies, deals, and tickets, right? Those are like the load bearing walls of the CRM for, for many, many years. But HubSpot has slowly added more objects, products, quotes, orders. They also now have courses and listings and appointments and events. So this is wonderful for anybody who has different, more customized use cases for things that they need to track inside their CRM. But the one that I wanna talk about today is services. So if you wanna use your CRM to track your services, listen, I run a HubSpot implementation and marketing agency. So all we do is perform services. So we use this in our own portal and I'm actually gonna give you an example from our own portal as well as our demo portal today. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna go to settings up here, you click the gear icon in the top right, and then you're gonna find objects, you're gonna expand that and you're gonna click services. Now, if you don't have services set up, you, there will be a button for you to just activate that service and then you'll have the service object in literally two seconds. Once you have that set up, it works just like any object in the CRM. You can create custom service properties. You can customize the form that people fill out when manually creating services. You can customize how services associate with other objects and add custom labels. And you can build pipelines and customize how the service records look. You can do all of that. So what I'm gonna focus on right now is I'm gonna show you the best way to set up services. And I'm going to use a scenario for a large HR company that assumes that they sell HR consulting services, recruiting services, and accounting services. So imagine this is like some large workforce management company. Let's start here. We have created some pipelines, right? Because if we're gonna perform services, we don't just wanna track what are we doing, for which client, and how much money we're making. Right? We can actually use this as a way to support the delivery and maintenance of those services. So we do that with pipelines. We actually have two different pipelines for HR, one for projects. So we've customized our stages here, verbal agreement, right? The idea is that as soon as a deal is moved into a closed one stage, it will trigger a workflow that will automatically create a new service based on whatever, whatever was sold in the deal and drop it into the pipeline. Then you notify your team and you guys can track the onboarding and activation process and any other stages that are related to delivering this service. So this is for HR projects because maybe we, we do HR services, maybe it's like a, an employee handbook development service, which has a flat fee of $5,000 and takes a month or two to complete. Well, that would go in the HR projects pipeline. But then maybe you have an HR consulting retainer where the client is basically paying your firm 2,000 bucks a month to be their fractional HR leader. And you're gonna perform a lot of services over a period of time. Well, now you have a pipeline that is specifically designed for a retainer. So you'll have like renews in 60 and renews in 30 so that when you're setting up the service, you're going to capture things like what services are being provided, who's the owner, when's the start date, when's the renewal date, right? So that way you can build workflows that, hey, whenever the renewal date is 60 days away, move the service from the active stage to the renews in 60 and send internal notifications to your team to remind them that, hey, this renews in 60 days, better get started with the renewal planning and the proposal and everything like that. Uh, the, the other pipeline example I'll show you is recruiting engagements, right? So for a recruiting firm, right, you're gonna 
activate the client, you'll start with the screening, do your interviews, offer negotiation, and then ultimately complete it. And you've either placed them or not placed them. When you set up a pipeline, don't just create the stages, but build the, con the conditional stage properties, right? So let's look at this. So what this is showing is that in order to move the, the service in the HR projects pipeline to onboard and active, you, there's information that you have to cap, to capture. So what's the total revenue? 5,000, what are we doing? Handbook creation and compliance audit. Who is the owner of the service? When does this start? Uh, when was the kickoff meeting? When When's our target completion date? And how is the client sentiment? Red, amber, green, is it good? Is it okay or is it bad, right? So now what you've done is you made it so there's no way we can activate a service without capturing this relevant information. And if you've ever watched our videos on deal pipeline optimization, you know this is critical because now you can report on all of the different elements that are relevant to the services that you're providing. Next, let's talk about creating custom properties. So now we're in service properties. Again, maybe you're used to creating custom contact company or deal properties. Now we're in service properties. And as you can see, it looks exactly the same way. So what I would recommend before you create any properties is create custom groups. Whenever the, the object is created, HubSpot will automatically, there's a whole bunch of default properties that get created automatically whenever you turn an object on, and those will fall into two groups, service information and service stage properties. So if I view the service stage properties, we're gonna see that cumulative time in this pipeline stage, so on and so forth. So HubSpot's already going to automatically create so many properties that are gonna help you track things. Maybe you wanna see how long it takes projects in the accounting pipeline to uh, get out of this stage or that stage. So that's all gonna be baked in for you. You don't have to create any of that yourself. But invariably, if you're gonna use services, you're going to wanna to create a lot of your custom properties. So first, especially if you have different lines of service, Create a group for all services. So these are things that apply to every single service, no matter what, right? Billing contact information, client category, right? Is it a new client, an upsell, a return client, a retainer renewal, kickoff meeting date? And then no matter what, you're gonna have a property for service type, right? So this is where you list what are what all the services that you do, and then you make it so that nobody can create a service without selecting this. Then you'll obviously have your, your drill downs in your, uh, your other groups, in this case, HR, recruiting, and accounting. But let's go back and talk about service type because conditional logic is going to be really important for you. When you are creating a service, you don't want to turn it into some giant exercise in manual da data entry. What you can see here when we customize the create form, so this is what people have to fill out whenever they manually create a service, the name, the pipeline, the stage, the client company, and the service type, right? So try and keep the high level properties as minimal as possible. That way it doesn't take somebody 10 minutes just to create a service record, right? The CRM is supposed to be efficient and easy to use. But no matter what, depending on the service, you may wanna gather different information, right? So in this case, let's look at the service type is accounting. So now if you select accounting, then it's gonna prompt you to say, who's the accounting owner and what accounting services are we providing, right? If it's HR consulting, same thing. Who's the HR consultant? What are the HR services we're providing? Recruiting, in this case, maybe is really different. Maybe whenever it's recruiting, we need to gather a lot of information up front. Yes, who's the recruiting services owner, but what position are we hiring for? What's the function? right? What's the seniority, employment type? Is it full-time, part-time, target hire date? What rate are we getting on this? 20%, right? These are all things that are really, really important. So figure out what those important things are you based on the service type. So let's quickly recap because there's only a couple more things to cover on the service, right? You set up the object. You will create your pipeline or pipelines. You'll create your custom properties organize them into groups, create your conditional stage properties, right? If pay, like another example, pay structure is sal if it pay structure is salaried, what's the salary range, right? If it's hourly, what's the hourly rate? So that's very smart and intelligent. 
Then you customize the form that is required whenever somebody creates an object. And so now we've really got a lot of the basic service configuration in place. Let's talk about the last couple of things you want to drive it home. So the first is association labels. Services will associate with companies, contacts, deals, other services, and tickets. As you know, you can create new associations through here, but what's most common is customizing how other objects can associate with a service. Perfect example is contacts, right? If you're providing managed services, you may have different client contacts at the company that would be associated with that service, right? You'll have your primary contact, you'll have other people on the team, but who maybe aren't your pri primary contact, but they show up to meetings and provide feedback. You'll have billing contacts, you may have executive contact, you may have a, a consultant that doesn't work for the client, but that's involved in the service. So create those custom association labels so that you can properly customize how people associate with services. So now what I'm showing you is let's actually create a new service object, right? Let's say this is recruiting. I'm going to go ahead and enter my information here. Director of marketing, senior level. This is full time. This is hybrid pay structure is salaried. Salary range low is, let's say, 100,000. High is 125,000. And the target hire date is August 1st. Placement quantity, we're only hiring one of these and our rate is 20%, right? I can associate it with this deal, these contacts, and now I'm gonna create this service. This is really simple, right? And this is a demo portal, but now, to bring this home, let me show you a demo service that I created in our actual pipeline, our actual CRM. Right now I have a service for Retune Marketing, which is the company that we use, literally, to shoot our videos. So Matt Riley is sitting behind the camera right now as I'm, as I'm speaking to you and his company is Retune Marketing. So shout out to Matt and Retune Marketing. They do a great job in helping us produce all of these strategic HubSpot tutorials for you. We don't actually have a service for Retune Marketing, uh, but I didn't wanna show you a real service that we're actually providing to clients because that is sensitive information. So let's pretend that here's a service for Retune Marketing. The client category is new. They're on a retainer. So you can see it says retainer overview. It shows me what type of retainer we have, primary roles needed, what we're doing in that retainer, start and renewal date. We've got our project management folder. We've got breakdown of roles. We've got breakdown of revenue billing. Matt is pretend paying us $6,500 a month. We have the company associated as the client. We've got contacts. Matt's the primary contact and the billing contact. James is the team member. I've got a timeline of where we are in the, the retainer and how far along we are. All of this you can tell is very, very customized. The other thing that you can't tell is the fact that this, these sidebar sections are customized. If this was a project, these sections would be completely different. So we've made these sections conditional to what type of service is being provided. And so what does this give us? I, now I don't have to speak in hypothetical terms, right? My business is the gist. What do we do? We help companies set up HubSpot, um, leverage HubSpot best, and we do ongoing partnerships, retainers to support marketing and sales functions. So we have a property called service type. Is it project or a retainer? If it's a project, is it a, is it a marketing implementation project? Is it a HubSpot project? Are we doing a content calendar, right? A HubSpot audit, an SEO audit, right? All of these things that we do. If it's a retainer, what type of retainer? Are we making content? Are we a fractional CRM admin? All of these other things. And so what this helps us do is not only track relevant information about our services so we can report on that, but it also helps with the administration, right? If a project's target completion date has arrived, but the project is still in an active stage, it's triggering notifications to the team say, hey, this project's delayed, why? Get on it, right? If a retainer is coming due within 60 days, it reminds us. So it's not just us inputting data, but then the CRM is returning the favor 
and actually helping us be more effective and be more efficient. So if you run a B2B services organization, I highly endorse leaning into the services object. Make it so that when a deal moves to close one, you're automatically creating a service, dropping it in the respective pipeline, assigning it to the appropriate person, and using that to track the onboarding and, and ultimately the, the delivery of that service. It's really, really gonna help you uh, bring in more foundational reporting and automation and functionality into your CRM. So that is the services object best used. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. It's gonna make sure that when you come into YouTube, you'll see more of our content. It'll also help other people like you who are trying to get the most out of HubSpot see more of our stuff. We really wanna help as many people as possible. And finally, if you would like to get a strategic process breakdown in your inbox every single Monday morning, subscribe to the Spotlight. It is a weekly spotlight of another effective use case in HubSpot with a video, with a process breakdown, bulleted list of what you can expect to get out of it. We show you how to do it and get the most value out of HubSpot. Link is in the description. Subscribe to the Spotlight. Once again, I am CJ Maurer with The Gist. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon.